Hello, welcome to final part of this series. Here we are only discussing the important topics. So let's move to our 81st question. Ischemia following supracondylar fracture suggested by option A pain and reduced capillary return on pressing in the finger pulp. Option B pain and blurred sensation. Option C undue pain and pain on passive extension of the finger. Option D pain and a tense and a tender fora. And the answer is Option C, undue pain and pain on passive extension of the fingers. Now let's move to question number 82. Night stick fracture is. Option A, is fracture of the radius hollow. Option B, fracture of radius with wrist subluxation. Option C, direct fracture of the ulna hollow. Option D, fracture of the ulna proximal radio ulna subluxation. And the answer is. Option C, direct fracture of the ulna alone. Now let's move to question number 83. Isolated fracture of the radius. Option A, are prone to rotary displacement. Option B, to achieve the reduction in children, the forearm needs to be pronated for upper third fractures. Option C, to achieve reduction in adult, the forearm needs to be supinated for middle third fractures. Option D, to achieve reduction in children, the forearm needs to be supinated for lower third fractures and answer is option a are prone to rotatory displacement now let's move to question number 84 college fracture splinted after reduction in option a in 5 degree flexion and 5 degree ulna deviation option b in 10 degree flexion and 10 degree ulna deviation option c in 15 degree flexion and 15 degree ulna deviation Option D in 20 degree flexion and 20 degree ulna deviation. And the answer is Option D in 20 degree flexion and 20 degree ulna deviation. Now let's move to question number 85. The commonest wrist injury is Option A fracture of a scaphoid. Option B lunate dislocation. Option C sprain of the capsule and ligaments. Option D injury of triangular fibrocartilage complex. And the answer is Option C sprain of the capsule and ligaments. Now let's move to question number 86. A mallet finger. Option A is best treated with a splint for 8 weeks. Option B surgery is good alternative. Option C surgery carries a low rate and wound failure. Option D, metal work problem is also rare. And the answer is Option A is best treated with splint for 8 weeks. And now let's move to question number 87. Avulsion of the flexor tendon of the fingers. Option A, caused by direct trauma. Option B, caused by sudden hyperextension of the distal joint. Option C, the little finger is most commonly affected. Option D, the flexor disjoint superficial tendon is avulsed. And the answer is Option B caused by sudden hyperextension of the distal joint. Now let's move to question number 88. The complete rupture of the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. Option A is very common. Option B only the ligament proper is torn. Option C the thumb is unstable in flexion only. Option D the thumb is unstable in all positions. And the answer is Option D, the thumb is unstable in all position. Now let's move to question number 89. The commonest cause of stiffness in hand injury is Option A, the presence of fractures. Option B, tendon injury. Option C, failure to use splintage in safety position. Option D, presence of edema. And the answer is Option C, failure of the use of splintage in safety position. Now let's move to question number 90. MRI is method of choice for Option A. Showing structural damage to the individual vertebra. Option B. Showing displacement of bone fragments into the vertebral canal. Option C. Displacing the intervertebral disc, ligamentum favor, and neural stretches. Option D. Provides information on dimensions of the spinal canal. And the answer is. Option C, displacing the intervertebral disc, ligamentum favum, and neural structures. Now let's move to question number 91. 
A patient met with a road traffic accident with injury to left knee. Dial test was positive. What could be the cause? Option A. Medial collateral ligament injury. Option B. Posterior lateral corner injury. Option C. Lateral meniscus tear. Option D. Medial meniscus injury. And the answer is Option B. Posterior lateral corner injury. Now let's move to question number 92. The primary stabilizer for valgus stress at 30 degree of flexion is Option A. The MCL. Option B. The LCL. Option C. The PCL. Option D. The ACL. And the answer is Option A. The MCL. Now let's move to question number 93. Locking is a feature of chronic. Option A. Anterior cruciate ligament injury. Option B. Posterior cruciate ligament injury. Option C. Anterior medial instability. Option D. Meniscal tear. And the answer is Option D. Meniscal tear. Now let's move to question number 94. The reliable method of diagnosing central meniscus injury. Option A. Pivot shift test. Option B. Reverse pivot test. Option C. Applied compression test. Option D. MRI. And the answer is Option D. MRI. Now let's move to question number 95. During running and jumping, the loads transmitted through the ankle and foot. Option A. 2 times body weight. Option B. 4 times the body weight. Option C. 6 times the body weight. Option D. 10 times the body weight. And the answer is Option D. 10 times the body weight. Now let's move to question number 96. In plantar flexion of ankle, the vulnerable ligament for the injury is Option A. The posterior talofibular ligament. Option B. The calcaneofibular ligament. Option C. Anterior talofibular ligament. Option D. Talocalcaneal ligament. And the answer is Option C. The anterior talofibular ligament. Now let's move to question number 97. The first ligament injured in twisted angle is Option A. The talocalcaneal ligament. Option B. The anterior talofibular ligament. Option C. The posterior talofibular ligament. Option D. Calcaneofibular ligament. And answer is Option B. The anterior talofibular ligament. Now let's move to question number 98. The lateral ligament injuries of the angle may mimic. Option A. Displaced fracture of the fibula. Option B. Displaced fracture of the tarsal bones. Option C. The injury of distal tibiofibular joint. Option D. The injuries of the tibialis posterior tendon sheet. And the answer is. Option C. The injury of distal tibiofibular joint. Now let's move to question number 99. Big toe extension muscle supplied by Option A, L2, Option B, L3, Option C, L4, Option D, L5. And the answer is Option D, L5. Now let's move to question number 100. The central cord syndrome is due to Option A, a fold on the flexed neck. Option B, hyperextension injury of the background of the herniated disc. Option C, a hyperextension injury in a patient with facet joint, hypertrophy and thickened ligament of favor. Option D, an anterior spinal artery lesion. And the answer is Option C, a hyperextension injury in a patient with a facet joint, hypertrophy and thickened ligament of favor. So that's the end of this series. We will be back with another topic soon. If you have any kind of doubt, and need clarification for any of the above questions to comment in the comment box. See you in the next session. Thank you and bye bye.